who was a huge problem character at launch, but it looks like Rosa is not going to be on the screen. Instead, we're seeing Alf. Yep, Alf versus Mona's Mark on this one. A Mark has been seeing a little bit of a blow up in the recent months. Uh, got some buffs not too far back. Mm -hmm. and yeah, seems... making those uh, tipper hitboxes a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And everyone sees Mono try a little bit of work on this one. This is, I feel like this matchup wouldn't be that bad. This, I mean, usually when you see like a disjointed sortie character against someone with really short range, you're like, yeah, this probably would be good. But between Pikmin projectiles and honestly, the way that Alf can be a little slippery, I think. Yeah, no, uh, especially with the down B armor and uh, all the mix ups that he can get off of uh, the up B. Mm -hmm. And then just nickel and diming you with the Pikmin damage over time or the purple Pikmins. Although it's looking about even right now, this is a really scary place to be with those Mark Tippers. You do not want to eat a forward air at that ledge. Yeah, no. Uh, Dubuz has been kind of uh, swinging his way out of uh, disadvantage so far. Nice back air out of shield. Going to be getting Dubuz some space. Yep, playing in the mid range right here, tossing out a little bit of Pikmin's conditioning for the grab. Actually going to get the kill even yeah. with good DI. That was the blue Pikmin, I think, that was in front. So that's going to be it. Oh, All right, going to get the goodness. combo up, up the up smash. The meme? Alright, tossing out the Pikmin, white Pikmin in play, but swatted out really quick. Mono is able to get a lot of these Pikmin off while playing the neutral between the uh, fair, nair, etc. swings on this one, which is helpful. But now Debuzz has uh, the fun combo, the double purple. Mm -hmm. All right. Although uh, purple's on stage does make you, uh, or off stage does make you heavier for the recovery, if I'm not mistaken. Although we're seeing a lot of really cool upbeat cancels on this one to go for some even slipperier movement. I like that. Yeah, no, and I think uh, Debuzz has been doing a good job. Even when he's being thrown off stage, he's down being those Pikmin back to him so that he can use them to uh, cover his cover his recovery. Mm -hmm. All right, getting up there with a forwarder. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> that, that's such an interesting, like, jump arc compared to the normal one. That's an interesting way to approach. I haven't really seen too much uh, Alf Omar purple like that. Yeah. Rage, uh, purple Pikmin back air going to be taking Mono's second stock, but Mono finally with the neutral air, taking to Buzz's first. Mm -hmm. Th this is rough, though. This is still definitely doable for Mono, but you need to get your momentum going, or like you said, it's just going to be nickels and dimes all the way to the bank on this one. All right. Yeah, I think you have to have momentum against Olimar to really be able to, to to win, honestly. I do like that parry on that one, but that is a projectile, so uh, Elf is not frozen when it's up like that. Mm -hmm. right. Trying to space out for the fair on that one, yeah, going no. a little bit aggressive. I do like Mono on this one, running up, sort of repping the shield, trying not to run into too many Pikmin, especially with the stock deficit. I'm actually a little surprised that the sword hitboxes are covering um, covering the Pikmin on Mono so much. I I honestly felt like because it's disjointed. Ooh, Ooh. Man, neutral get up no. into that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm honestly surprised too. I feel like normally it's uh, you know throughout the body, so it's like oh, it's on your back, it's on your head, it's on your leg or something. Uh, oh, that is just straight through you. Ugh. That that's a donut. The pain <laughs> on Marth's face. I feel it. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Well, that's a very anime way to die, is getting <laughs> donutted and blasted across the screen. Three, two, <laughs> All right. One, so, we're going to go over to game two. Battlefield for the counter pick on this one. Um, this is kind of interesting. I'm not entirely sure how the Pikmin interact with platforms, but... I'm not sure it would be favorable. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, no, I think on uh, some of them, uh, Mono can probably just hide under the uh, under the platforms against some of the more long-range Pikmin. Mm -hmm. At least not at least Pikmin that aren't the uh, the white Pikmin. Yeah, it might be uh, for combo purposes or uh, trying to land, mix up the movement a little bit on this one. But uh, I do feel like Marth can benefit as well from the additional landing options. And Marth can shrug fairly well. Very mm -hmm. large aerials. All right. Time to buzz over at the ledge on this one. I like Ooh, that. Nice. Threatening the spaced forward air and then going for the side B, even at a range where if the Rekka hadn't hit, still difficult to punish. Yep, and now I think we're starting to see Mono's counter pick come into play with uh, just being able to cover the platforms. All right. I like that. Spaced out in air into fair. Still enough time to shield, not playing to commitment, but does hit a pigment with the portal that will open up a punish for the buzz. 
sorry. That movement is so cool. Yeah. It's so simple, but it's so nice. Uppy is just so hard to deal with sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think you can cancel it into anything, right? Yeah. Dang. That is pretty crazy. And it's got that little burst of speed. Of the oh, no, right up into it. Huge. Well, not huge, but just super active hitbox. Mm -hmm. The uh, Pikmin F smash. Yeah, I think it's a uh, constant hitbox because it's a projectile. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm not certain. All right. You get up on that one. There I like we go. Yep, covering the jump with that one. Now going to close up the stock, going dead even. Going to take a grab, though. This is a lot of damage 41. on the board. out a little bit going in for those running in F-tilts. We have seen those running in F-tilts not only uh, do decent work in the neutral, but also swat away Pikmin as they come in. So it's a nice little zone-breaking option for Mono. Mm -hmm. so again right there, sort of pushing DeBuzz towards the edge of the stage. Mono giving up a lot of ground to get back for the retreat, though. DeBuzz slowly working back from the edge. Yeah, just trying to find his way into the, uh, the Pikmin Fortress. Very close situation. And you see, that's a lot of self-control there from Mono at a space where if an aerial was swung and it was on a shield, that was unsafe and opens up the damage or uh, potentially even a kill. Trying to remain a little less committal on that one. Now, DeBuzz has the purple Pikmin. Uh, kill could be very imminent. Ooh, nice uh, down air conversion. Yep. Actually catches the up B this time on that one, tossing the purple Pikmin to go for a quicker recovery and gets them right back. Liking this very patient from both players. Mono going for zone breaker once again, risking eating those purple points to the face, but it's working out with the right timings. All right, getting DeBuzz off stage once again, but has to worry about the purple Pikmin coming in. Even though DeBuzz threw them, he was ready with the forward air. Interesting option there. That might have been a call out from Mono to look for uh, the DeBuzz looking for an air dodge punish, but mm -hmm. DeBuzz just coming in and swinging. Well, I think if Mono had spaced that F-Tilt a little bit better, that could have been DeBuzz's second stock. Mm -hmm. But instead, he has to find a, ne a neutral air. Yeah, there you go. That is another thing about this matchup. We have seen it once or twice. Um, the Pikmin do catch hitboxes, but then that can also work in Mark's favor sometimes, too. If you catch a tipper hitbox and then uh, <laughs> DeBuzz runs into that, that could yep. be a big problem. All right. Heading off stage, sort of taking it a little bit easy, rotating the Pikmin. Updating the work schedule for the week. <laughs> All right, spacing out. And those are very difficult aerials to deal with. Very nice disjoints. Like, uh, Mono's uh, playing very patiently right now. Uh, willing to give up quite a bit of space and waiting for DeBuzz to start swinging. Yeah. And now we're seeing DeBuzz at 71%. Yeah. A good tipper. I, I think that was the first situation we've seen where uh, Mono was really able to take advantage of the, uh, the catching on DeBuzz's landings, but just like that, it's already out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that was a great jump off of ledge from Mono right there. Uh, kind of weaving his way around the platform, making it ambiguous as to whether or not he was going to land on it or not. Mm -hmm. All right. The Buzz has two purples on deck again. This is huge damage, huge stage control. Very scary. A back Custom air treatment. at ledge could be lethal. Yep, we're seeing the run up forward tilts on this one to try to. Uh, we've also seen it whack the Pikmin out of the way. Oh, this could be scary. Oh. All right. Mono now with the stage control, going to get knocked off. Opting not to go for the tech on that one, just going for a slow rise, neutral in place, not looking to get mixed. Please don't neutral get up. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> oh. I feel you, Mono. I understand. The little the little knockback, like, oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, no, Mono had some great momentum coming in, but uh, one wrong one wrong leg, ledge option, and that was it for Mono's last stock. Mm-hmm. I do <laughs> Something about, I don't know, seeing the purple Pikmin, I just feel like it's the <laughs> slowest thing in the world. So I was like, oh, he threw that before he even tossed the red yeah. Pikmin, right? He's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But it's just, 